Um, I, I've been asking every day who's on now, you know, and so somebody said, Oh, I'm here until such and such a time I'm here until, and that just doing that helped tremendously, you know, so right. we know who's there because it's hard when you're doing it, you know, you're all online, who knows who's there, you know, yeah. you don't know yeah. who's there, <laughs> yeah. uh, but just always, doing that I, helps. <laughs> and, and then sometimes you have people that just would like to do events and that's great. Right. Mm-hmm. So then they're just event people. You know, yeah. so then they're not, so then you're not uh, burning out your online people, also asking them to do events. Right. Um, and then you have coverage for while when you're at an event because your online people are still online and your event people are at the event. Yeah. Um, the, uh, one of the things we always joke about is it's, you know, it's a volunteer job that you can do in your pajamas with a glass of wine mm-hmm. um, or a cup of coffee in the morning, you know, and, yeah. and, and uh, if you think of how many people are out there on Facebook every day, right? You just yeah. got to like figure out how to, re, you know, to, to talk them into doing it. And some, sometimes we will use the tactic. Do you have people that like give a lot of advice on your, oh, yes. on your, on your group? So yes. we'll, we'll contact them and say, oh, man, you seem to have a lot of good ideas about how to get a lost pet home. Would you be interested in volunteering for us? And wow. we picked up a few that way. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, because because they're on a lot anyway, right? And lots of times they're thrilled about that. Yeah. Um, um, and sometimes it makes them kind of back off a little bit. And also, <laughs> like, oh, I shouldn't be giving so much advice. Yeah, I know. I could. I know. I could use like some more help doing. Um, computer stuff like web page you know updating web pages and i would love to have somebody write story write the stories about you know how you guys always put up the nice reunion stories and stuff we've had some great reunion stories but i don't even have time to write about those you know um and that's so important i know it's so important but um it's just finding the time the balance somewhere you know and and getting the people so i'm going to take some of your uh tips and advice here and and work on it just starting to working on my own people that I already have and then going from there and seeing if I can first off recruit a volunteer coordinator um because I think that is a really important step in this um and I do think right now you know people people are um kind of down in the dumps and um, maybe bored, maybe they want something to do and helping other people, especially when you can reunite a family with their pet is so rewarding. And it, and it's, it makes you feel so good that um, this is a good, a good thing to volunteer for, you know, at least I think so. Um, And I'm sure you think that as well. And um, you know, I know one of, our volunteers, he's a doctor and he joined us as one of um, our volunteers on our group's page because uh, he lost his dog and sadly his dog was hit by a car, but um, he felt, you know, such a sense of um, thankfulness, I guess, that uh, he wanted to help us and he helps us whenever he can, you know, and we're just thankful for whatever time he can give us because he's really good. You know, he's really good at it. He stepped right in the very first day and he was like, bam, bam, bam. You know, he knew exactly what to do. And he's the nicest guy in the whole wide world. I haven't met him in person yet, but I hope to someday. (laughs) But I'm very thankful that he's joined us. And, um, you know, it just goes to show that even though he you know, your time is limited, um, that, you know, you can help and you can make a huge difference just in the time yeah. that you can give. Yeah. And that's a really good point. So that's one thing that we always say to we do not try to put a time commitment on it. You know, if somebody can do an, an you know, an hour or can they do a county or can they do a, you know, a, a couple of hours or, or whatever, um, because that can be overwhelming at first. I think if you've told somebody that they need to commit two hours per day, mm-hmm. I think that's really overwhelming for a lot of people. And, mm-hmm. and, and eventually they may end up giving you four hours a day, Yeah. but let them build up into that. You know, you try to put that out there at the beginning. I just think that turns a lot of people off at first. Yeah. Think, yeah. Oh, there's no way, but then they get into it and they get liking it. And then they're, yeah. then pretty soon they're, you know, they're, they're really helping you. Yeah. Um, and that, that's really true. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, because I know I see that a lot on with other organizations. They'll try to say, okay, minimum commitment of, um, you know, five hours per week or whatever. And, mm-hmm. and I just think that they shouldn't even just, I, I just don't think they shouldn't go there at all. Just say, yeah. we appreciate any amount of time that you can give to us. Right. And you know what? I actually lost what a, a good volunteer. Well, she was good at the time um, because mm-hmm. she wanted to be the volunteer coordinator and she was insistent upon a specified amount of time. And I said, absolutely not. I said exactly what you just said, that whatever time anybody can give us is what we appreciate. And she didn't like that and she left so i was like okay yeah i'm like all right if you can't have it your way then see ya (laughs) but um Uh no i don't i don't believe in in making anyone have to do anything because then they are gonna you know they're not gonna be happy you know especially if they don't feel comfortable at first and i know you know because the people that have been on board for a while they know what to do and we're fast 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 you know and and it's a little overwhelming and it can get frustrating so you know we don't want people to get frustrated you know we want we want to give them the chance to learn and uh we always say to everybody you know um Don't be afraid to try. If you make a mistake, it's nothing we can't fix, you know, and you're not going to learn how to do it unless you try to do it. And that's one thing we try to stress. And um, I think it's important that people know that don't be afraid to to give it a chance, you know, and it may take a little time to get used to it or whatever, but it's okay if you make a mistake. It's nothing that can't be fixed, you know. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. We say the same thing. Yeah. And and um, I, I do know of organizations that have lost a lot of volunteers because they had a perfectionist at the helm who, mm. you know, was, would nitpick over everything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and then people are just afraid to try anything because they're afraid they're going to make a mistake and be, you know, reprimanded and, and they're just volunteers. And, and again, I hope they don't think that, I'm like that. <laughs> <laughs> and these are people that are very, are very, you know, professional people or whatever that are getting <laughs> reprimanded in their little volunteer <laughs> positions. So. Well, I, I, I like to think, I don't like to think that I'm like that, but maybe some people do because we just have, we just have a method and I, you know, mm-hmm. so every time we do something, it's the same way. And I, it's just like your page, you know, like you always post yeah. the same way. We always want to yeah. post everything the same way it doesn't have to be exactly the same but so people get used to it you know so they right. know and right. like the shelters will know that when we put something out there it's going to have all the information they need you know you don't want to have a, one of those that we've chuckled over before i lost my dog you know and that's it yeah. nothing else mm-hmm. you know we will yeah. never we will never yeah. allow a post like that you know? yeah mm-hmm. um and, and so i do nitpick about little things like that but those kind of things yeah. are important you know those kind of yeah. things are very yeah. important. <laughs> we have uh well when i'm doing the the uh the other states volunteers the, the lost dogs of america volunteers i actually have a dummy facebook page that they practice posting to first of all ah. um so that we can i can look at it we can you know they can look at it and then that way they're not putting it out to the public and often it's just you know one or two or three times they have to do that um, mm-hmm. then and then it's and it's good but that i think gives them a sense of confidence too that they didn't you know stick it out there on the public page and it might have been not quite right that's really good because we have what we call um, the tools page that gives examples for each particular lost dog, do it this way, lost cat, do it this way, you know, found pet, do it this way. Um, but that's really good to suggest that they yeah. actually practice a post. That's a really yeah. good idea because yeah. we don't, we didn't have that. We just had examples and even the examples sometimes were confusing. So that, that's awesome. I'm going to yeah. <laughs> definitely start and, doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's easy to just do a, you know, like a, un, a well, not an unpublished, but a, but kind of like a hidden Facebook page. Yes. Yeah, so a private one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. yeah. And then we of course have a private Facebook group for the volunteers behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where we communicate um, and I'm sure that's probably something like what you have as well. Yeah. And we try to keep that very positive. No, no negativity or toxicity really allowed in there. We try to w- watch that fairly closely that it's staying pretty positive. And not that people can't come and have their little, you know, rant or whatever now and again about something, you know. Yeah. Not, not another volunteer, but, you know, about, you know, 
oh, that, you know. Yeah, I know. didn't even have a collar on their dog <laughs> or whatever. That sort of I stuff, know. You know? <laughs> yeah. But we try to keep it to a minimum. Yeah. And everybody's really, actually, really pretty good in there. They and, and I think that kind of camaraderie keeps people coming back, too, because they, yeah. even again, like we just have never met each other, um, we've all become friends. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. Well, Kathy, this has gone by so fast, but you've given me some great ideas and, and great suggestions that I'm going to follow up with. So um, yep. if you could perhaps tell everybody how to look up your web page where they can read more uh, of maybe you've got some information about this on there. I'm not sure, but um, at least I know you have different information about all kinds of things to help lost pets. Yeah. So we on the, on the website, we do have one series for coordinating volunteers um, when you're looking specifically for a lost dog. So that was okay. called Harnessing the Energy, and it's a five-part series that's on lostdogsofamerica.org. Um, so that, that would give anybody ideas when they're actually trying to coordinate a group of volunteers, you know, searching for a dog. Okay. Um, and, um, and then our Facebook page is Lost Dogs of America. All right. And, and, if I have, and if I have time, I would just like to plug... So the, a book that has really helped me with this whole idea of leading a group of people is called Tribes, and it's by Seth Godin, um, and I listened to him speak at an animal welfare conference one time, and I got his little book, and it is just a really, really good book on how to lead a group of people in a common cause. All right. Did you say Tribes? T R I B E S. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes. All right. Yes. All right, Kathy. Thanks again for being with me. I always love talking with you and I always learn something every time I do. So I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. All right. So remember everybody that a lost pet can't tell anyone where it lives. So please be sure your pet is microchipped and wearing its ID tags. And if it is chipped, be sure the chip is registered and up to date. Thanks for joining us today. And until next time, take care and keep your pets safe.